have a, an interesting presentation, a uh, senior archivist at the uh, Government of Canada Library and Archives, and uh, Norm Lapotte is going to give us kind of an overview of, of the resources that are available for hockey researchers. Thank you, Bill. Uh, I have a small, uh, I have some sore throats, and my English is not always the best, so I'll have to cope with me. Uh, I would like to thank the, uh, thank the organizing committee for the opportunity to provide an overview of uh, the resources we have at the Library and Archives Canada that will have be using the acronym LAC, the LAC. I should first say that I'm not a hockey historian. However, I've been involved with the sports archives programs for 18 years at LEC, with the last five years as the archivist responsible for the program. So I hope I can provide you with some information on our holdings, which may be of potential interest to you as hockey researchers. In addressing the subject of hockey in our collection, I'd like to use the, the following quote from the introduction to LEC's online exhibition project, Back Check, a hockey retrospective that I think I know a lot of you know about because his sir was involved in that. I'll talk a bit more about that later. And the quote goes, hockey is the, is the history of Canadian. The game reflects the reality of Canada in its evolution, ambitions, char character, tensions, and partnerships. Again, the quotation. For LEC, preserving this reality links directly to our mandate. Uh, LEC is a relatively new uh, institution born in 2004. Uh, born of the merger of two uh, much older national agencies, the National Archives of Canada and the National Library of Canada. Our main mandate is to preserve and make av available the documentary heritage of Canada for the benefit of present and future generations. My presentation will relate mostly to our archival holdings. However, I would like to provide some general information on, how, on the library collection. Uh, LAC holds over 20 million books and published materials such as newspapers, magazines, Canadian official publication, thesis, maps, and music. So anything you can see as, as public, as printed, as say, it, it, we have it. As some of you know who have published books now, uh, as some of you who have published books know, Canada's legal deposit uh, regulation required that two copies of each book published in Canada are sent to LAC for inclusion in its whole. So we have, that's why we have so many books. LEC is not a landing library. How, however, registered users can consult published material on site in Ottawa. With the importance of hockey in the Canadian culture, the sport is naturally well represented in our published holdings. A recent search on the subject of hockey in our catalog produced around 5,500 hits. So that's the number of uh, publications we have related to hockey in, uh, in Archives Canada. Users of our website can also access Voila, which is our, our, the online national union catalog, which is a single point of access to the, collection of to the collections of libraries across Canada. So you can search the whole network of libraries in, in Canada. The same search on hockey shows over 35,000 hits and provides the names of the libraries where the publications are found. So a very good tool if you want to know where some of the publications, where some of the books on hockey are. Can be found. As part of its printed material collection, Library and Archives Canada also collects copies of selected current Canadian current daily newspapers, all Canadian ethnic newspapers, all Canadian indigenous newspapers, and student newspapers also. As an, exam as an example, the collection includes 22 newspapers from the Windsor area. With, with the collection catalog <coughs> indicating which ones are available online on microfilm or as a hard copy. LEC's collections includes private archives, which consist of archives of individual or organizations of national importance. They cover all aspects of Canadian society, documenting Canada's cultural, social, economic, and political development, <coughs> including sports. The, collect the collection also includes federal government archives, which are records deemed to be of archival value created by departments and agencies. To give you an extent of the broad extent of the, uh, to give you an idea of the broad extent of LEC's total archive collection, we have over 250 linear kilometers of private and government records, 30 million photographs, 90,000 films, uh, over 500,000 audio and video recordings, and 425. Uh, thousand works of art, so a lot of material is there. 
that uh, governs national uh, uh, Canada. What do we acquire in, in our archival holdings? I've talked about the four textual records, photographs, films, videos, sound recordings, documentary art, plans, architectural plans, maps, medals. What we don't, what don't we acquire? Objects, that's more the museum, uh, at least in, at, uh, for our library and archives Canada. Objects such as hockey jerseys and equipment, uh, trophies, and non-documentary material. In these cases, the LSC will work in partnership with museums and hall of fame to plan a home uh, when such objects are transferred in, in, uh, in archival form collection. For us, what's particularly important in manage it, managing and making available archival <coughs> records is to maintain the integrity of the records of an individual or corporate body. So keep all the top documents, <coughs> documents together and preserve also the records linkages, their context and their provenance so research can benefit from them. So when we do, have, when we do acquire an archival co collection, we, we, we try to maintain all the, the, uh, the documents together and also show the links together so that uh, researchers, when they come and look at the specific item, can relate it to the rest of the form of the collection. So if we look more specifically at LAC sports holdings, what are the strengths of our hockey, hockey archives? First, the early history of the organized sports, so especially in Montreal and in Ottawa, and also the records of the hockey governing bodies in Canada. These first two research areas were the focus of our sports archives program during the 70s and 80s when we had a full-time dedicated archivist for the program. A third strength is our large audiovisual collection of film and videos relating to hockey. And, last, and lastly, the documents showing the intersection, intersections of the game with Canadian society and culture, including resources found in large bodies of uh, records such as photo collections and government records which at first glance would not seem to be good hockey related material. Where are the gaps? Women's hockey is one. We don't have a lot of records relating to women's hockey. And also the participation of indigenous and some cultural communities in the game, as well as the development of para ice hockey, para hockey. So similar gaps exist for all our sports holdings, and we have identified these research areas as a question parties for the next five years. Collection and series <coughs> descriptions as well as file level planning games do exist online for most of these are, for most of LDC's archival buildings. However, despite the fact that we're adding more and more archives and tools to access them online, discovering some of these interesting items may require doing some research on site in our holding. It's this it's the reason why I chose the title Yours to Discover for this presentation, not just because of the, uh, the just replaced slogan of our beautiful promise in Ontario the four governments decided to place. The reality is that some collections lack online detailed finding aids, and also a very small percentage of the collection is digitized. You can see by the extent of material we have, we just as much as we try to digitize, the more, the more documents we want, we can just digitize just a small percentage. In terms of the use of material, LAC and researchers must uh, comply with the Canadian Copyright Act as well as any existing access conditions when they exist for the consultation of the material. Having said that, an increased number of material is available through LEC's website and sites such as the Early Canadiana online website. Before I provide more specific examples of hockey-related uh, hockey types of documents, I would like to mention again, again the back check project. This online exhibit on the history of hockey was created by the committee of, of this society, led by the late Paul Kitchen, for LEC in 2003. It includes many digitized images of photographs, newspaper columns, textual records, and publication documenting the development of hockey in Canada, as well as essays on various aspects of that development. It remains the, belly, the best LEC guide on what we have relating to the history of hockey. We also, you can also find information about our hockey resources on LAC social media, such as our Discovery blog, our YouTube channel, and our podcast. Uh, here you can see Andrew Ross's uh, blog entry. I should mention that I'm also lucky to have two LAC colleagues, Andrew Ross, I think that a number of people 
of you know, and Jennifer Anderson, uh, who have done research and published on the history of hockey and who I can consult regularly when it comes to uh, the acquisition of uh, uh, sports archives and hockey archives. Now the more interesting stuff. I would like now to quickly show you some specific examples of the hockey material we have at LEC. Since I've been continuing adding to this list since the last few days, I will ask Bill to cut me off with my time for the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> One of the jewels of our sports hall holdings is the Montreal Amateur Athletic Association Fund, as it documents the early de development of many organized sports in Canada, including hockey. The collection includes the minutes and other records of the Montreal Hockey Club, the first winner of the Stanley Cup in 1893, and also of the Canadian Amateur Hockey League that existed between 1898 to 1907. LEC also uh, holds the early minutes of the annual general meetings and of the Executive Committee of the Ontario Hockey Association. You can see here the first few minutes, the first minutes LAC has from the Montreal Hockey Club from November 9, 1893. Uh, this slide, again, it's not a clear, very clear picture, but also on the, on the my left slide, also you have the 1899 minutes of the Canadian Amateur Hockey League when the league decided to implement the use of hockey goals with nets also in their league. Example of the Canadian Illustrated the News does document the early hockey games during the Montreal Winter Carnivals. You can see here in the left corner of this image uh, an early art representation of a hockey match in 1883. The LEC does have made material relating to Lord Stanley and his family involvement with hockey and the early history of the Stanley Cup. The diaries and papers of Philip Danston Ross, one of the first, uh, one of the three original trustees of the Cup, are also part of our holdings. <coughs> so here you have the top the 1890 photo of the Rideau Hall Rebels hockey team, which includes the sons of Lord Stanley. And also James Creighton, who's the one with the captain on there, um, considered the father of or organized hockey. Also, and also we have an 1893 photo of Lady Isabel Stanley, one of the early female players of the game in Canada. <coughs> LEC also has the papers of every Henry Woodside, who was a colonel in the Canadian military and whose many enterprises, including being a newspaper man and civil servant, had him moved from Ontario to Manitoba to Yukon and back to Ottawa in the late 1800s and early 1900s. A keen interest in hockey had him write articles on the game and captured images of some of the early games and teams across the country in photographs. Here you have a photograph of a hockey game in Dawson City in 1900 and also a friendly mixed hockey game in Winnipeg in 1990. LAC does have a number of photos of early hockey teams in its collection. <coughs> the governing bodies. Uh, the CHA, the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association, was the national administrative regula regulatory and developmental body for <coughs> hockey in Canada from 1919 to 1994 when it merged with Hockey Canada. LAC holds the historical records preserved by the association with the great majority of the records relating to the years 1960 to 1970. Digitized copies of its book, rule books, constitutions, and minutes of meetings from 1926 to 1971 are available online on the area of early Kennedy on the site. Documenting all the activities of the CHC, the 1960s and 1970s records touches all re issues relating to the game in Canada as well as international issues. In this slide, I I indicated a few of the subjects. Changes to hockey rules, development of coaching and officiating, relationships with international hockey organizations and Canadian participation of the international tournaments. Also the relationship with the, with, between the NHL and other professional leagues with the CHA. The LEC also has the early records of Hockey Canada from 1969 to 1978 when its main activities were the development of teams to represent Canada at international tournaments and fostering the development of skills and competencies among Canadian hockey players, including the creation of a coaching certification program.
there are two examples of, uh, of records found in the CHA collection. Uh, again, it's not very clear, it's very small. And if, uh, on one side, you have, on this side, you have an information sheet on the playing history of Gilles Gilbert for the 1969 draft. So we have the draft files there where you have information sheets for each of the players that was eligible for the draft. So it shows you the playing history of where you played before. Uh, and on the left side, you have a 1962 letter from Clarence Campbell to the CHA about the application for a franchise in the Eastern Pro Professional Hockey League by the owners of the Windsor uh, Arena owners. So I guess by Bob's uh, uh, presentation this morning, that application never went through. So that's it. Because I think there, there, was the, there was a discussion, and that, I think, was a bit the main topic of that letter or the exchange was that the, one, the CHA wanted to protect the senior team there within the, because it was in the arena. And so, but, but it's interesting, the file stops there, so there's no more information. So, so you, your presentation gave me the answer I was looking for for that. Um, LEC also, has, <coughs> uh, and, uh, sports archives also includes the records of some of our hockey builders and owners at both the professional and amateur levels. Uh, the Tommy Gorman's papers document his involvement in the early years of the NHL as a general manager with the Ottawa Senator, the New York American, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Montreal Maroons, and the Montreal Canadiens. The papers relate mostly to the Senators as an NHL team and also as a senior club, but some photographs and other records provide information on other teams also. LAC also holds a small font from a, ho a, a hockey pioneer, William Norty, who was instrumental in the construction of the Montreal Forum and the creation of the Canadian Amateur Hockey Station in 1914. His material does include one of the rare objects collected by LAC, a cup pattern on the first Stanley Cup that was given to all the players and members of the management team uh, of the Montreal Canadian for winning the 1952 and 1953 Stanley Cup. Nokia was executive vice president of the team for many years. The Molson form also includes Hartman and Molson's files as owner of the Montreal Canadiens from 1957 to 1968. And for anybody interested in, in accessing those files, you had those require the permission of the Molson Foundation. So just a few uh, uh, examples of the builders we have, uh, hockey builders we have. Uh, papers of a few professional hockey players, including two prominent players in the history of the game and of the Montreal Canadiens, are in our collection. We have the Jacques Plan papers, which is probably the most complete form we have of a professional hockey player and also a legendary goalie in, in a regular at that. It includes Plan's personal and business correspondence, correspondence draft notes for an autobiography project, training notes as a goalie, a goalie coach, Photographs and photographs relating to his career and other documents also. Here you have a letter that uh, that he wrote to his wife. So there, there's a it's an interesting. It really shows also the personal side of a uh, uh, of a shop now also, and uh, those documents are used quite often for people who want to provide a bit more the different aspect of the uh, hockey, a personal hockey player's career. Maurice Richard. While most of the Maurice Richard papers, as you probably know, were purchased by the Canadian Museum of History, LEC has acquired personal and family papers belonging and relating to the rocket. The fall includes the scrapbooks of his career kept by his wife during his career and after, personal and family photos, an interesting photo album documenting his trip to the World Hockey Championship in Prague in 1959, where he was invited by the uh, Czech government, and a sample of the condolences book signed by fans who paid their respects as Richard uh, Richard lay in state when he died. Here we have a, well, a photo where you have the tree, uh, you have Billy Bowe with Richard and Gordy Howe. And also here you have the, uh, a tele telegram from Niels Stewart, who was sent to Malice Richard when he, um, Richard broke his, his uh, uh, career, uh, goal uh, record for the most goals in a career. Papers of prominent sports journalists who have covered hockey also find in LAC's collection, including the Chalmay papers, the Trent Frame papers, and the Fred.
The largest collection is Maillet's, who was a sports journalist from, 1920s to, from the 1920s to 1960s in Montreal, and a member of the original L'Allée du Vieux Poil, which is the French version of the hot stove uh, league. It includes a number of historical files on hockey, as well as photographs and printed material <coughs> with the hockey, the hockey from 1930s and after. So uh, if we have, um, which was a bit the, uh, the, hunt, uh, the, the headline that, uh, that was used, because uh, uh, Morenz, Harry Morenz, for uh, a period of time, wrote uh, a column in the, in the newspaper, I think it was La Patrie, I remember well, yeah, La Patrie, and, uh, and May Coast, uh, Ghost Rit wrote the, uh, the column for him. This is what I'm going to do. I think this is uh, also a, a photograph of the All Star team on the 1930s. I'm not sure about the Catholic. The large photo negative <coughs> collection of newspapers and magazines, such as the Montreal Star and the Weekend magazine, includes images of every level of hockey and document the most important events or issues relating to the game. So you have this large collection of, of, of thousands of, of negatives of, and photographs that are available for people, and they document every uh, level. Like the Montreal Star, you have at the amateur, at the professional level, even internationally, uh, you have to consult the finding guys Finding aids to find the information, but it's all available to researchers to look at. Here are just a few examples of some of the photographs in the Montreal Star Fund. And here are some of the, uh, the weekend magazine collection. So we have a, the uh, Bob, Bob, David Bauer in the, the national, the first national LPP. We also have collections of photojournalists such as Frank Lennon, Jacques uh, Carroll, and Ted Grant who covered sports including hockey. As an example, we have the, the Frank Lennon phone including <coughs> 750 prints and 500 negatives of the 1972 Summit Series including his famous photo of Paul Anderson's winning goal. So, very interesting <coughs> collection for who wants to to document or to uh, do research on the that series. <coughs> the early development of hockey games broadcast is also documented in the, the CBC's archival files and the audio recordings of Foster U.S. coverage of some NHL games in the 1940s. As an example, the CBC records include requests by radio stations to the Canadian Radio Commission to broadcast professional and amateur games on the radio. We see here an exchange of telegram between the, the commission and Louis Lalonde, who was coach of the Montreal Canadiens, where he gives his okay to broadcast the team's ex exhibition games in the Maritimes in 1924. Most star communication. LEC holds the film and video collection of, the, of NHL games of most star communications, an operating unit of Molson who produce television broadcasts of national hockey league games. This large collection can be consulted on site. However, copy you use require permission of the donor and also the NHL. So you can see the, the extent of the material that we and the period that it covers 1927 to 1994. We also have Bill Galloway's collection of sport films. Galloway was a collector of early films relating to hockey, and the material includes news, newsreel strips and audio recordings relating to mostly. 1950 NHL games, international tournaments, some clips from the first national All-Star game in 1947 are available on the LEC YouTube channel. And Brian McFarland also has donated to LEC a large amount of early films relating mostly to professional hockey. The evolution and innovations of the equipment and facilities of hockey also captured in LAC offer holdings. It includes patents of hockey <coughs> equipment dating as early as the late uh, 19th century. A searchable database of digitized copies of these patents can be found on the white website of the Canadian Intellectual Property Office. Here are a few examples of patents found in this database. Percy Le Soir's uh, patent for an improved rolling net in from 1912. 
and also William Birch Moore's 1961 patent for job accounts, the famous Pretzel face mask. So these are all available through the, the website of the Canadian Intellectual Property Office. If you want the digitized copies, we have the originals at, at the least. <laughs> the Q-tip. <laughs> a similar database also exists for industrial design, which is registered with this people. At the moment, the original are still with the office and not LEC. We have here a design registered by Stan Mejita for his help in hockey helmet in 1970. Uh, the evolution of hockey equipment as well as its availability to consumers is also documented in the LFC collection of mail order catalogs. Here are images of a hockey boot for boy and a Mrs. hockey boot available to order from the Eaton's Fall and Winter 1915-1916 catalog. LEC also recently acquired and is still processing the Sears Canada collection, which includes all the Sears and Simpson Sears catalogs. So people are interested in LEC also has numerous resources relating to Canada's hockey participation, participation at the Winter Olympics. A good start is the Canadian Olympians database of photograph hosted by LEC, which covers all the Winter Olympics up to 2004. So you can do a search there by Olympics or by sport and uh, find uh, uh, photographs on the review to hockey. We also have some personal form relating to <coughs> Winnipeg hockey, such as the photogra photographic material of the Winnipeg Falcons, winner of the first Olympic, ho Olympic gold medal in the Conrad Johansson papers with the player with that team. And we also have the Cindy Watson form, which documents the fascinating story of the gold medal winning RCA players at the 1948 Olympics. Researchers can also find records relating to hockey and its links to important societal issues in Canada, such as the history of residential schools in Canada and more internment camps. We have photographs here of a residential school team and it's a war team. A prisoners of war team, I think from the, the I think it was located in Medicine Hat. Here's a short list of some of the other subjects that are covered by LEC collection, hockey and the military, hockey and international relations. We have records relating to hockey business, incorporation, records and uh, clubs and leagues, and construction of arenas. We just acquired the Dominion Bridge uh, papers at the home and there's photographs there of, the, the, uh, of many arenas that they helped to, to build. There's also material relating to government inquiries and how to Relate to some, some of them relate to hockey. And also we have hockey and Canadian culture. We have uh, papers of writers, we have papers of uh, uh, <coughs> other persons that relate to literature, creating feature films that uh, when the subject is often lost. Awesome. And that's it for me. That's, thanks for you for listening. And if you know have any archives of national importance that you think would be interesting stuff to to LEC, please do not hesitate to contact me. Maybe I can add. This is peripheral, but I think it'd be of interest to you. Uh, when I was in the U.S. Army in Europe in the late 60s, uh, uh, to see hockey, I had to go see Canadian military hockey, and you saw an entry there. And I used to go, the RCAF, this was before the integration of the Canadian Armed Forces, so it was, the Army was up in Lahr, and the RCAF had three wing at Baton Soiligan, south of Heidelberg, Zweibrücken wing at uh, uh, four, and one was down at Lar. I would go to three to see games. Well, I quite literally collected the programs from these games, oh, yes. and I donated, donated them to the archives. Oh, okay. yeah. One player of note I'll just mention, at Three Wing, the player coach was a guy named Tony LeCarry. Does that name resonate with anybody here? I see you nodding head there. Yeah, he had a cup of coffee with Detroit, and by the time uh, I was in uh, Europe in late, uh, the late 60s, he was in the RCAF and uh, player coach of uh, Three Wing. We have a large collection in our national on the government side. There's a lot of photographs from hockey games uh, so from different eras, so that's an interesting collection. Yeah. 
So this uh, question relates to the upcoming uh, talk that's coming. So would uh, Library and Archives Canada accept uh, uh, oral histories from uh, uh, individuals uh, relating to hockey and, uh, and other subjects? We, we do acquire, depending on the subject, if, I mean, if we don't acquire, well, we already have some material, uh, some the same similar type of material. But yes, we will evaluate and look at them. If, if we feel it, it, it's of a national importance and it, it it, it documents Canadian, uh, Canadian society and Canadian sport uh, history. Yeah, we'll look so in other words, again. there's a vetting process. Yes, not, yeah, we we're not gonna yeah, I didn't talk too much, I didn't want to go too much into, but for any any uh, offer of material that's offered to us, we do an evaluation, we do our archival evaluation, we look at what we have in the collection already. We, we determine what is the uh, uh, archival value of, and also of national importance, and that's what we part. So if, uh, like, let's say we've heard about a Charlie McDougall's uh, self-constructed uh, uh, hockey cards for Owen Sound individuals. Like, would uh, um, Archives Canada be uh, interested in objects uh, of that nature? Yeah, for us, we uh, we work in partnership with, with the whole Canadian archival community. So, uh, so, and in that sense, when when material we feel again, it depends. Well, I have to look at it and also the context of the records. But if we feel it is more of of a regional or, or a local uh, uh, value for people, researchers in that area, we may, in, the, uh, that, that in this, this kind of cases, suggest to the people to donate it to an archive closer to that. And then, uh, just one other quick question. If there's, like in terms of research, if you wanted to do research on the subject of hockey and art, you touched on uh, the art collections being there, but if uh, you wanted to have like a comprehensive uh, file of what in the whole thing does uh, constitute <coughs> hockey and art. That is there any success uh, that? Know, I mean, that's when you need to talk to somebody from, again, we, we have a specialized uh, expert for each of these type of media. So we have, a, we have art archivists. So then probably the best thing would be to talk to, to the sport archivist, me, and also to the art archivist to see what, what's available. Some are in are in collections that have the media, many media, but you could also have some that are being collected by uh, by the art archivist. So I don't think, to my knowledge, there's no really unless there's something <coughs> in, in the 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 back check uh, uh, project. I don't think there there's any lists of specific on on that. So thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, you have to make an appointment, and is there a fee? There's no fee to, uh, to come in. Uh, if, if you want to, there's a whole process of how to, if you go on our website, it explains a bit how to, to uh, come, how to order material, how to register as a user, you have to register as a user, you have to order, how to order material, and then you just come at LAC and, and, you, and you look at the material. There are some costs to making copies, no, no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a low, Cost to me, it's just for us, it's just cost recovery of those, uh, those uh, copies. And what we do now is mostly digitized copies, because that, 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 that's what users want. But uh, if ever you have any question about the process, like I said, I didn't want to go too much to that, I can provide you some information. I have, I'll, 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 I'll are you here at right. lunch? I guess is the are you staying for lunch? That's the better yes, question. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm here all day. What's the question that you over one hour here? Uh, how practical yeah. might it be to request? Uh, LEC to host a future SIR meeting. Do you have facilities, resources? We, no, there? that's something we did the, the last time. It was, I yeah. think, in Renfrew. I, I think I organized, I don't know if we were there. I think yeah. I organized a, a quick tour of, of our, especially, I mean, something that's really nice to see, really cool to see is our preservation center, which is a state of the art, and see a bit what I, I had uh, brought out a, a number of records relating to hockey that we have. So that's something that could be, but we, yeah, we do have also, we have facilities to, to do that also. So, uh, we'll be in yeah. touch. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I'll have to get you to see your other questions for lunch for Norman. We don't want to get too far behind schedule here.